Hey y'all, I just got done with a run. I'm gonna show you what I like to go through in order to kind of help myself cool on down and stretch out my muscles before I go and sit down for the rest of the evening. Um, so, as an easy casual jog, but if you're done for any workout, at any time of the day, when you just, you know, about do this after a good, you know, you're at least a little warmed up and limbered, it'll help you on out. So the first one is the quadriceps. Tight quadriceps, tight around the knees, Stand up right here and pull your foot to your back side. And I'm going to show you another movement with this because uh, I know a lot of people can't reach around here. If you have a tool with you, maybe like a, uh, a towel or a rope or anything, you can wrap it around your foot and help pull yourself on up here. You don't have to necessarily pull tight to your butt. You can also work on lifting your leg out and back and pulling tight to your butt for pressure on your knee. You don't want to have pressure on the knee, so you got to be able to go this gently. Uh, I always emphasize more mild, gentle stretches for a longer duration rather than really hard, aggressive ones for a short, like 10 second burst. So a light stretch here, getting all across here, work on pulling that leg on back some to get a little higher in the hip flexor. We'll hang on out, and then we'll switch. Like I said, I, I can do this while I'm talking because it's not that aggressive. It's just enough to know I'm doing something, keeping the blood kind of flowing through my muscles as I, as I stretch them out and then relax them. And I'm going to show you the other variation of this if you can't figure out a good way to do this. Uh, pull your foot to your backside. It's on some of the other videos. It's on the video where I'm in the fitness center at DCCC and I start off by propping my leg up on one of the high bars and I do all the long static stretches. Uh, I think I call it the couch stretch. I show it to you. I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm just gonna do a, a variation over here. So I'm gonna grab this camera. And I'm gonna try to find a spot to do it on some bleachers. And that would be, you know, similar to a couch that you might have at your house. So I put my foot up. This would be the back side of the couch. And this would be the cushion on the couch. And there you go. Hopefully you can see me enough to kind of figure out what's going on. My foot. My toe is pointed up and flat. This would be the back of the couch. This would be the couch cushion, and my foot would either be on the floor or possibly even up on the couch itself. But this is the same concept. It just makes it so I don't have to balance. I could be further off. I can make it more aggressive by pushing myself in. I can make it more aggressive by pushing my knee closer to the back and getting a harder stretch. So you can always find something. I know everyone's got a couch or something, you can do this against the wall. Uh, in the fitness center, I do it against the wall. You can do this. It will benefit you to take your time to stretch this on out. You don't have to balance. I can stay here for many, many minutes at a time. Same thing, foot up the wall, knee into the back. And I'm not putting any weight on this leg, so it's not like it's hurting my knee to have it down here on the bench. I'm not, my weight is in this leg supported. Uh, I'm just using, you know, I mean, it's really easy. It's not uncomfortable. And if it were uncomfortable, you could put a pillow or a shirt or a towel underneath of you. Yeah, just take your time, stretch. That's those big muscles up here, those thighs. I'm going to go on back down here. I'm actually going to put it down here. And we're going to get the hamstrings. Now I like to sit down doing this again. I don't have to worry about stressing myself, trying to stay balanced or bending on over. I start with a wide stance and I just reach on down. Again, you can reach anywhere. There's a couple ways to do this. One is with the back flopped on down and rounded. Let that happen. Flop on down. Try to bring your nose towards your knees or, uh, or towards your shin or your thigh. Just let your body relax over. And you're feeling a stretch across the back of the knee and the back of the leg right here. And again, longer, gentler stretches. If you had a, a, a strap, you can put it around your foot. You put it around your thigh and pull your wand down. Sometimes just gravity is enough. Other side. And 
and right down the middle. And you can do this with the legs wide. You can go really wide. You can go really narrow. You know, I recommend variety. If you find one that feels better, then stick with it for a little bit longer. But variety is great. Sometimes it's nice to do the same thing over and over again so you can judge progression. Like you may not want to come to this every day, do something entirely different, because then you'll never know if you're getting any better. I mean, if you just feel better in general, that is a good way of judging your progression. That's a fine to anyone. But if you are looking to be like, you know, I want to be able to touch my toes, it's different to touch them here than it is in this wide position. And it's different to touch it with two hands than it is with a single one or the left hand or something along those lines. Uh, it's also different it's just depending on how you hold your back on up. So those times I were letting myself fold on down, try to bring my knee, my nose down towards my knees. Uh, this time I'm going to keep my back on up straight. So I'm going to reach on more like trying to get my chin towards my nose. Try to lift my back on up as I keep folded forward. Lift my back. And as I lift my back I can feel that stretch happening. Not in the back so much. If I feel it in my back it's because I'm trying to tighten these muscles now. At first I was letting them relax. Now I am trying to tighten them so don't spasm them don't spasm them out uh, the stretch is still primarily back here this now is tightening and this is stretching so as I'm here and I work on kind of lengthening my back there's a difference hopefully you can see it it may not look like much but there's relaxed like my back relaxed and there is working on lengthening through the back not the neck either but through the back and not much change happened here lengthen through the back as I work on lengthening the arch of my back I feel that stretch getting more and more intense in my hamstrings so very similar stretch again variety is key if that makes your back feel tight at the end then go ahead and fold forward and let that back muscle relax um, an entirely different variation that classic one where you lay on down and work on reaching this leg on up try to keep this leg locked okay Lock it on out. You, I know people say, don't lock out your knees, but that's when you have like weights on them. Right now, there's no weight on me, so it's A-OK -okay to work on locking that out. We want full extension of the knee. So get that leg extended. Have a towel or something here if you can't grab hold of your toe uh, or the back of your thigh without keeping it. You, it. It's better to be full extended and down low like this than it is to be bent and way up here. Not doing yourself any favors up this way. So straighten that leg on out, then work on keeping your leg, pulling your leg on back. But keep that leg locked. In fact, squeeze this muscle to keep it relaxed. Squoze muscle, turned on quadricep, straightening out that leg, working on full extension. the other leg squeezing this muscle here keep my knee locked out I don't want to be bent I want to lock it on out and I can work on pulling it back towards me also watch this leg you know, don't let it bend too much. Try to keep it pretty straight as well. You don't have to worry about it too much. As long as it's kind of down, gravity will keep it straight enough. If you wanted to go crazy, you can really straighten this leg out and work on that. It's up to you. If you want to go real, real more, a bit more aggressive with it, you can. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's the front of the legs, the back of the legs. Let's get the, the groin real quick. Pretty standard stuff. The uh, butterfly, you do this a couple different ways. Again, you the fold forward style. Fold forward, stretch, relax. And then you can work on sitting up more and still letting your legs fall on down. So this one you kind of rock. Think about sitting on up, arching your back slightly. Not enough to, again, you don't want to hurt the back, but you are using those muscles to sit up tall. So folded, back relax. up tall and for me gravity is enough pulling on down you can push down with your elbows but gravity does plenty enough for me 
and if gravity is too much, again, get a towel, something, wrap it on up and help you on up. I've been in that position where my, my hips were so tight that just like letting them fall was like agonizing. I had to get stuff to put under them to keep the pressure off. You know, depends on the time of the day and depends on how trained you are and how flexible you are. But you can, you can always progress it. So uh, that's just a good method to uh, lessen the stretch a little bit for a time. Okay. The outside of the hips, the classic one where you just pull your knee on in. This is a good one. You know, you're trying to twist a little bit, but mostly you're trying to pull this leg across and the stretch is all out here on the outside of these hip and groin area, uh, hip and glute area. And that takes care of pretty much all of the upper leg. We're going on down, last two big ones, the calves and then the shins. Uh, let's get, well, while I am, eh. let's start with the calves. Right back here, everyone gets tight back here in the Achilles tendon, all the way up to the, the meaty part of their leg and to the back of the knee. Calf stretches. So I'm gonna start down on the ground. You don't have to be on the ground. But basically you lift your hips on up and your goal is to reach your heel down towards the floor. The higher your hips go, and the more your heel goes to the floor, the bigger stretch you're gonna get in the calves. You can do it two at a time, you can do it one at a time. This is pretty easy for me, so I'm gonna go to the next level. Next level on up is to find a wall or something. You put your foot on up into it, and then you lean into it. You're trying to decrease this angle, the foot and the shin. As this angle gets tighter, this muscle gets stretched out more. So that's the goal, lean into it. Same concepts as other things, you can help yourself on out by kind of squeezing this quadricep muscle. When the knee is bent, it looks like it gets tighter here, you're taking the stretch out from back here. The calf actually, uh, some of the muscles come up here to the, ham, uh, to the femur as well. So when you lock out that knee, you get a better stretch. So squeeze that knee again, Squeeze the quadricep to lock out the knee and then lean into the stretch. And I can feel it all the way up through here. Again, if you have ten, uh, like a tenderness back here, go easy. Still stretch it out, but no, there should not be like a wincing pain or a tight pain. You've got to stretch out carefully. This might be a bit aggressive. Sometimes you can um, even just change a little bit. Like I'm going to go towards my pinky toe a bit more or I'm going to go towards my big toe a bit more. And you can be surprised how that might, you know, change it up just enough so you can get around that 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 spot that has some tenderness. Also, if you're tender in your Achilles tendons, uh, you know, uh, careful working through it. You gotta really, you can eventually, you will get through it, but you don't want to work through it this through pain it just means take two days off then walk again take two days off then walk again take two days off then walk again then try to do two days of walking in a row then take two more days off then just walk a single day and you just got to build up to it don't give up you can beat it but also don't just think that you're going to walk four days in a row just and get over it that's not going to happen you got to build up slow Okay, so that's the calves. Now here's a spot that people often complain about. The shin. People think they're shin splints. Likely it's not shin splints. Shin splints themselves are actually a little micro fracture in the bone. That usually takes a lot more, that's an, an overtraining problem. And I mean like overtraining as in like you're doing 50 miles a week something like that and maybe you might get them at doing like 25 or 30 miles a week but you're probably not going to get them because you walked three times and you went a couple miles it's just it's just not the bones are a lot stronger than that 
So what you probably more than likely have are, is just pain across this muscle right here. The muscle right here is, is um, the functionality of it is to pull your toe up. You can see the muscle flex, right? You see that muscle right there? Flexes as I pull on up. So every time you walk and you lift your toe on up, you're using that muscle. So when you go and you, um, you know, you lift your foot up, you step, every time you're kind of controlling the descent of your foot too, you're, you're gonna be using this muscle. So you're, you're, it's just getting used a lot more. Eventually you'll get better at running. The muscle will get stronger, more adapt to be uh, being used. Your form will also probably get better just as you get more relaxed running. You won't have to walk like, you know, I've seen people run really stiff, especially with their foot. They, they lift up and their foot's like this and they're up and they're up. It's just, you know, you just gotta let the leg flop a little bit. But anyway, I'm going off topic. Uh, it will get better. Stretch it on out. It's a muscle. It's probably not shin splints. It's just a tight muscle. So if stretching out this muscle is by shortening this angle, stretching the opposite muscle is by lengthening the angle. So you're just going to put your toe this way and push against the floor. Notice my toe is bent backwards and I'm pushing on in and you get that stretch right across here. And again, carefully, you can tweak the angles. You can kind of go sideways a little bit and I can get it a bit more across here. I can roll on up to my big toe. And I can change up the angle a little bit, right down the middle, a little to the side, and I can kind of rock into it. But that's that stretch right across there. Uh, another good one is just simply sit with your feet pointed backwards and sit right here. If you can't do this fairly comfortable, if it's the knees, that's one thing. But if it's this, if this joint is tired and painful right here when you do this, it's your tight shins. Your, your ankle is tight, your shin is tight. You could get by with this by doing this, having something to sit on. Again, a towel wrapped up or a ball will get you off just a little bit, but you wanna get that foot flat. Watch out for going out too much to the side. Keep it in tight, that foot flat. You should be able to do this fairly comfortable. To lift up is no big deal, but you should be able to get this angle nice and wide. Um, along with that, just simple rolls will do it. You can manually do this by kind of pulling on your foot with your own hand. If your foot gets tired, same thing, get your toes, get your fingers between your toes, pull on them, twist, stretch your foot out. It, people are surprised that their feet hurt when they're done running. But if I tell you, if you went mountain climbing and you know, for an hour and a half, and the next day your hands were sore, you probably wouldn't be surprised. You're like, well, yeah, you were holding on to stuff, gripping it tight, your hands are sore. Well, you just walked with all of your body weight on your feet more than they're used to. It could be the shoes to an extent. It could be a hard terrain. It could be fixed by maybe like that. But it's also just the fact that you were walking on your feet and all those muscles were flexing and absorbing your impact. You know, stretch them out, give them some love, pull, flex one way, the other, twisting, stretch out your foot. Uh, you know, it'll thank you for it. It feels good too. <laughs> so at the same time, you can get the ankle. You can pull on the ankle, light twist, flexes, and you might be able to alleviate some of the pain across the shin as well. And because all this is so interconnected, you know, and might fix the calves too. Everything from here down, rolling that ankle, taking care of your foot, definitely you, know, you could definitely see some big improvements with that it might be one of the things that helps you on out but uh that's it for now that was pretty much all the legs right there um you know i talked through it so it took me probably 15 20 minutes and if i were just doing it myself uh, i could be done with it in five to ten minutes and i can do it a couple times a day you know especially the standing ones where i just fold my foot up where I could bend on over and stretch my calves. And I do do them several times a day. Uh, it's not a joke and it's not something uh, that I just say to get you to do it. It's a life, it's part of the lifestyle. I ask a lot out of my body. I want to be able to move comfortably through a, a, a good range of motion. So I practice those movements daily. Uh, it's something that you just build a habit into. All right. Let me know if you got any more specific things. I'm glad someone asked for some running uh, stretches and I'll do them again. I hope we can see it started to get darker than I, <laughs> uh, faster than I thought. Y'all have a good one.